Good afternoon and welcome to this, the service of the Holy Eucharist Rite 2, Eucharistic Prayer C. Everything you need for the service is in the bulletin and the hymn book. The words in bold are for you, the gathered, to say. The celebrant is Reverend Deborah Rankin. Our opening hymn is number 367, Come Thou Almighty King. We stand. Sorry, 365. <laughs>
reading of the lesson. A reading from the book of Genesis 28. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it, and he called that place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 139 responsibly by whole verse. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You rest upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go beyond your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make my make the grave my bed, you are also there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. Should I say, surely the darkness is so over me? And the light around me turns to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, God, and know my heart. Try me and know my restless thoughts. Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For well, the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For well, the creation was subject to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel hymn is number 482, Lord of all hopefulness. Please stand as we say. <laughs>
Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody, everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go get my chair. <laughs> Are any of you able to read that song without squirming a little bit? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a difficult one. Because it says that God knows everything about us, even if we try to hide. And that is a hard thing to hear. That we are known better than we know ourselves. And that is the gift that God gives us. Because we know, Scripture tells us, very clearly that we cannot lie to God. And the good thing about that is if you can't lie to God, you can't lie to yourself either because there's no way to get from point A to point B unless you accept the fact that God is not going to accept lies and you give up lying to yourself, to others, to anyone. One of the things that is true about God is this presence that drives out evil, that drives out disrespect. And I have to say that as time goes on, I have really come to appreciate that. It seems to me that we are always trying to fudge somehow on God's commands and God has none of it. If you want to spend time with God over the long haul, you got to get that stuff up. you got to give up the fudging because he knows you that well. And that is true except.
except when we really need him. When we really need him and we turn to him and we say, please help me, I hurt. He's there and he stays there and is there for every bit of it. I know because I have met him at bedsides. I have met him at deaths. I have met him everywhere I've gone. That powerful presence of Christ is there for us every time we need it. At the same time, when we come to God to ask for something, we had better clean up our act. It's just the way it is. <clears throat> the presence of God in the Old Testament is called the Shekinah. It's that. And you see it like in class, well, that isn't really a class B movie, the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the presence of God comes out and things die all around it. That presence drives evil in front of itself. And the first time you encounter it, I think, is in Genesis, the story of Adam and Eve. In the story of Adam and Eve, the tree is very carefully marked, do not eat this fruit. But they decide on their own that they know better than God, and they eat it. God's powerful presence drives them out of the garden. They chose. They didn't come to him for forgiveness. They hid from him. And in hiding from him, they showed their intent to continue to do what he had asked them not to do. In showing their intent, God realizes that they must leave. And the powerful presence of God pushes them out of the garden, does not tolerate lying to one another, to ourselves, to God, just doesn't work. If you understand this presence of God, that Romans lesson is going to make more sense to you. Because what it says is that so long as you decide that however you want to live your life is more important to you than what God asks of us, you will die. This is so simple. If you live as God calls you to live, you will live a clean life. If you live a clean life, people like you. They don't like to be beaten up by other people. And at the end of time, when God settles all of our accounts, because we have been living in the presence of God, we will continue to live in the presence of God for all time. That's the gift. If you accept the forgiveness and the salvation of God, what happens is that you are cleansed. And that cleansing makes you worthy to be in his presence. And that presence is there for you forever. I think I was at this about 10 years when I decided that I was going to practice the perpetual presence of God, the continual presence of God. Brother Lawrence taught this. And Brother Lawrence said... What he did was he had an ordinary job in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the monastery, and he washed dishes, and he dug, and he planted and gardened. And the other monks realized that he was the happiest person in the whole place. So they asked him, what are you doing? He says, well, I just imagine Jesus being with, there with me all the time. All the time. So when I'm washing dishes, I'm washing dishes with Jesus. And when I'm plowing the garden, I'm plowing the garden with Jesus. And when, I, no matter what I'm doing, I'm doing it with Jesus. He was practicing the continuous presence of God. And in that practicing, he was being lifted up and strengthened and emboldened. And went from being a rather timid sort of guy that nobody paid much attention to, to the happiest guy in the monastery. Because he was doing exactly what God has called all of us to do, which is to live in the garden with God. Well, of course it means that you give up something 
you give up having your way all the time. Well, do you get your way all the time? Anyhow, I don't. So what you do is you make, I sort of make a contest out of it. Since I need to clean up my act to be in God's presence and I want to be in God's presence and I clean up my act, I do it all the time. I don't leave it to Sunday morning. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to put up with this mess for like hours or days. As soon as I feel like I've distanced myself for any reason, that is when I begin to work on it in that moment. So that, that powerful presence of God is never very far from me. You can live this way. It's not all that hard. God's fairly clear about what he expects. All you have to do is exactly what St. Paul is talking about. He's talking about not being guided by what you want to do all the time. Be guided by what God wants you to do some of the time or all the time or as much of the time as you can manage. That life given to God, I'm 74. I figure it's the best part of the life that lays ahead of me is my ability every day to turn things over to God, to be forgiven and start out clean again. I can manage that for the rest of my life. And when I lay down on that deathbed and I look at God's angel, I will say, I am ready, take me out here. <laughs> That's what we can look forward to. That's what we can do for ourselves in this last part of our lives. We can step into God's presence every day, take the forgiveness that he offers us, quietly listen for what God has to say to us, and live each day as if it were the last one. It's what I intend to do. In the, so this parable, this parable is a is wonderful because it doesn't blame anybody. An enemy came and so, therefore, no fingers pointed at you. None at all. An enemy came and sowed the weeds out there, and we're not going to pull them up. And I grew up on a farm. Are you kidding me? I could tell the difference between weeds and wheat when I was six. <laughs> Because my uncle would have strung me up if I could <laughs> his feet. And I'm looking at this going, what are you trying to sell here? And I thought, he's trying to show that people are not weeds. That they're not to be disposed of. But very much, I think, in the fashion of Adam and Eve in the garden, when God comes in glory, they're going to just be blown out in front of his presence. And those of us who have spent our days trying to stand in his presence will be left behind. And I look forward to it because I plan to be in that number. All of scripture works together. It's not immediately obvious. I have been studying it every day for 45 years now. It all works together, and I promise you that. And if I don't understand it today, I will understand it tomorrow or the next day. Or God will show me, or Jesus will show me on the last day. It all works together. God's presence is not to be trifled with. Every time I come in here and sit here in the altar rails, I have a moment in which I say, you're saying this before God. You are saying this before God. Get your act straight. This gift that God gives us 
of knowing us, of wanting to know us, of asking us and inviting us into his presence and then giving us everything we need to be there. Everything. You name it, he makes sure we have it. All we have to do is use it. It is there. The grace, the love, the mercy, the care, everything is there. All we have to do is pick it up and use it. To clean ourselves up, to put on the wedding garment of salvation, and to come into the presence of God and live there as long as we live. Let us pray. In your goodness, Lord, you call us to a life that is better than any I've ever imagined. We tend to think of freedom as doing what we want, but we learn that perfect freedom is serving you. Help us, Lord, to do that for as long as we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Say the nice and free together. We believe in one God, God, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God and the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. Of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again.
For those celebrating their anniversary, Tom and Millie. For their anniversary. Lifting our voices with all creation, with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord, our God. God the Father of all things, hear the prayers we offer today and set free your creation from its bondage to decay. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. you.
service continues with Eucharistic prayer C. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. I will they were created and have their being. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us, by his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world 
in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is God's will that those who want him should meet him here. <clears throat> the body of Christ. I want you to come to the middle here. Uh, I don't walk all that well. Uh, I do it, but uh, uh, it's kind of a bad thing. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
and raise you up on the last day. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The closing hymn is number 344. <coughs> Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.